Okay, I want to look at the circle of Willis here for a minute. First of all, remember, the circle of Willis comes from two main sources of blood supply. One is through the common carotid artery, which splits into external carotid artery and internal carotid artery. External comes off and gives off branches like facial artery, temporal artery, occipital artery. Internal carotid goes right up into the brain, comes out right here next to the pituitary. The other source of blood is from the posterior blood supply, which is vertebral artery. And you can see the vertebral artery there coming up through the vertebrae. And then it's going to loop around and come up into the base of the skull with the spinal cord. So when we look at the circle of Willis from above, we can see those four contribution. This little tag I'm trying to get off of is on vertebral. So here's your vertebral arteries coming up from the posterior source. And here's your internal carotids on either side of the pituitary. Here's your circle. Okay, so all that blood kind of comes together. The two vertebral arteries come together and give rise to basal or artery, which is going to come up the base of the brain. Off of vertebral artery, you're going to have an artery that feeds the cerebellum. It's called posterior inferior cerebellum, cere cerebellar, excuse me. And you can't really see that on this model. Coming off of basilar, okay, coming off of basilar, you have your anterior inferior cerebellar artery. You have pontine branches, which are these little teeny ones. And then you have your superior cerebellar artery. Then off of the circle here, you have your three cerebral arteries. You've got posterior cerebral, middle cerebral, and anterior cerebral. And then you have two communicating vessels that communicate that blood supply with the circle, through the circle of Willis. This part right here is called posterior communicating. It's between posterior cerebral and middle. And this little structure right here is called anterior communicating artery between your two anterior cerebral arteries. Okay, this is a model that a lot of you probably have not looked at, so I just wanted to make sure that everybody saw it. If you can, look for it in lab so you can have a chance to look at it close up. You can see your common carotid on here. This will be the right side. And then you can see where it branches into right external carotid and right internal carotid. This is supposed to be the vagus nerve here. Off of external carotid, you can see your facial artery. You can also see the occipital artery. It shows a very nice stylohyoid muscle coming right off the styloid process right there. This is your digastric, posterior belly of the digastric. You can see your hyoid bone here. You can see anterior belly of the digastric and you can see mylohyoid underneath. Here's your submandibular gland. And there's your hyoid bone. Here's your mandible. Remember we had um, three little exit points for trigeminal nerve branches on the face. One of those was the mental nerve. That's this little guy right here, the little white one. This is your mental frame, and so this is mental nerve. Then you had one that came out underneath your orbit through the infraorbital foramen, which is right here. So that would be infraorbital nerve. And then you had one coming out of the supraorbital foramen, and that was supraorbital nerve, which is right here. Your eyeball would be here. Somebody ripped it out. This is just a branch off of the facial artery. Right here you can see the origi origination of your trigeminal nerve right here. So this is actual cranial nerve number five that you can see. So let's turn this around, see if we can see anything. If you look down here at the mandible, 
You can see some familiar things. You've got the hyoid bone. You've got the thyroid cartilage. You've got the um, vocal folds here in your larynx. You've got your thyrohyoid membrane. Here's your tongue. Underneath of that you have your genioglossus muscle, geniohyoid with the number 16 on it, and then your mylohyoid, this one that you can see in cross section. Here you can see your orbicularis oris muscle. And I think for you guys, that's probably all you need to know on this model. Take a look at it. Okay, I'm pretty sure I've shown you guys everything on this model, but I wanted to just go over a couple things again just in case. This guy is really good, and he's just got so much, so many structures that are nice. Here's the platysma muscle, orbicularis oculi, orbicularis oris, mentalis, supraorbital nerve, Rhizorus, zygomaticus major, here, zygomaticus minor, but it's got a weird, no, this one is weird. Zygomaticus major and minor are both right here. Parotid gland, parotid duct. You can see some branches off of the facial nerve here. So this would be temporal, zygomatic, buccal, mandibular. Oh, can't really see cervical. This is temporal artery. So this is temporal artery, vein, and nerve. This is facial artery here. Masseter, bucinator. Okay, on this side of him, you can see a little bit better. You can see supraorbital nerve, infraorbital nerve, facial artery. And you can't see mental nerve, but it would be coming out right there. This is actually spinal accessory nerve here. Temporalis muscle, temporal artery. There's facial artery again. Here's your masseter. Stylohyoid muscle being pierced by posterior belly of the digastric. Genioglossus, geniohyoid, mylohyoid. We look in the brain, this is anterior cerebral artery. And you can actually see middle cerebral on here, right here. With all these branches coming up to feed the temporal lobe. I don't think you would see a tag like that, but you never know. Okay, looking at the other side of his head, we can see part <coughs> of our circle of willows. <coughs> Excuse me. So here's basilar artery. So this would be vertebral artery coming up, basilar. This would be your posterior cerebral, posterior communicating. This is internal carotid. Middle cerebral would come off like this, and then anterior cerebral would go this way. Those are both on the brain itself. Sorry. If we look in here, we can even see the posterior inferior cerebellar anterior inferior cerebellar, superior cerebellar.